Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into data analytics. My guest today is Justin Newman. He is a lead quantitative analyst at the Pittsburgh Pirates Major League Baseball team, and uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so uh, usually I start my guests uh, where they went to school. So where'd you go to college? Yeah, so I went to University of Rochester in, in upstate New York. Ah, fantastic. So let's just go back in time before we get started on exactly what you do. Um, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it uh, freshman year of high school, senior year of high school? When did it all start for you? Yeah, uh, I would probably say freshman year of high school sounds about right. Uh, my dad had, had went to University of Rochester. Um, so even though that was never something I, you know, specifically what I do because of dad um, we'd even like visited the campus when I was a kid go to football games so probably around then is when it started to became like I need to start thinking about this a little more seriously oh so now did you uh pick University of Rochester uh from the get-go or was it basically other schools involved as well yeah, I had, I had applied to a handful of other schools. I was actually deciding ultimately between University of Rochester and University uh, of Richmond. So my mom kept kept asking, "Where are you going to go?" I said, "I'm going to go to U of R." Uh, but but I wasn't clear on which which U of R it was. So um, it was always one of my my top couple of choices. Um, but I, I had applied to probably five or six other schools as well. So now you get to University of Rochester. What's it like? What, what do you think about the school? It was a lot of fun. I think, you know, going from high school to college is such such a liberating uh, kind of experience. You have all this freedom. You can do whatever you want with your time. You can go to classes, uh, choose your classes. Like, you just have so much um, more freedom than you did. And I think, you know, socially, it's such a um, big change in a positive way, too, of just really getting engaged with new people. When you start out college, I think everyone's so welcome in, kind of open-minded and meeting new people. So it, it was a lot of fun, I think, getting started going there. Great. So so you graduate from college. Uh, how does one graduate from college and end up as a lead quantitative analysis for, at the Pittsburgh Pirates? Uh, I would say a lot of emails is, uh, is sending a lot of emails is one thing. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's changed actually quite a bit. The amount of these jobs that exist now is, is probably, you know, three or four times what it used to be when I was starting out. So back then, um, I did a couple things to prepare myself, um, such as like doing baseball related research and taking different programming and, and quantitative classes. Um, but there weren't like a ton of like jobs that were posted publicly. There was maybe a handful in, throughout the, the entire industry. So um, I was lucky enough to have a friend uh, who had worked for the Nationals previously, so he knew the email conventions of, of different teams. So it'd be like, you know, first initial dot last name at raise.com or, or whatever it is. Um, so I basically used those, was able to like find a bunch of people to work for teams. And just every week I would send one person at, at a team, uh, at each team, an email. And I probably had like a one or two percent success rate response rate, but sure. you know you only need need one one to be successful. So it ended up working out. So you end up at the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, that was in 2017. I started out uh, as an intern. I actually graduated college, uh, left college a semester early to take that that position. So now uh, you're you're the lead quantitative uh, analyst there. Uh, what do you actually do? Yeah, so my role was focused on the draft. So that's evaluating um, high school and college players. So um, it's kind of, I like to break it up into three different buckets. So one of the them is managing all the data that comes in. So we get everything from you know, your traditional performance data, home run strikeouts to, you know, how fast was the pitch? How was it moving? How was it spinning? Um, to scouting reports, to psychological data. So we get a, a bunch of different data on players. Uh, and part of my role is kind of ensuring that all that data gets integrated and is clean and, and we can use that in our decision making. So that's one piece. Uh, the second piece is kind of doing research studies. So, um, you know, could be what are the, you know, what characteristics lead to a good fastball. So velocity might be one, but also trying to like understand 
how important our movement or how important our angles of release and, and things like that. Um, so those kind of like bigger research studies then inform the last piece, um, which is player analysis. So looking at different players, you know, performance metrics and maybe how hard they're hitting the ball or different, um, different what we'd call tracking data that we get uh, and then breaking that down um, to try and ultimately, you know, put us in the, the position to select the best players in, in the draft if possible. So now how does one get involved in, in that? How do you, how do you do that kind of job? Where, you know, where do you start learning it from? Is it all in college? Yeah. So it was, I think there's, I guess there's a mix of things you learn in college that are applicable. So um, programming ends up being super applicable, especially to the data management and the research piece. Um, and then different statistics courses or, or even, you know, economics or, econometrics courses I took um, were really relevant to those aspects of it. The actual baseball part, right, is, is not as easy to, to learn in a traditional college course. If I, I haven't found as many, even like a lot of programs that, you know, do sports analytics, it's not necessarily exactly the kind of same kind of work we, we do here. So a lot of that, um, there's different websites online, such as fan graphs or baseball perspectives, perspectives excuse me, baseball prospectus that produce, um, you know, different articles breaking down player statistics and performance. So that was kind of how I got um, started in it. And then honestly, you learn a lot on the job. It's hard to, um, to really be able to learn exactly what a team will do because teams don't like to, to share a lot about what they do uh, yeah, with yeah. others. So now uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, Major League Baseball team, do they have a big analytics uh, the department? Is it something like the Yankees or the Boston Red Sox? Uh, how do you how do you compare? Yeah, so we're probably uh, size wise right around middle of the league. Um, depending on how you count people, um, there's people who might not you know technically be in the analytics department but do pretty uh, analytical work. We have around twenty people. Um, so that's smaller than teams like the Yankees or the Dodgers or even the Rays, but um, but bigger than some of the, the other teams that where analytics are a little newer. Now, um, a- analytics is is really big these days in baseball and as well as other sports. Um, what exactly do do they actually do? Do they do, are they watching every single pitch of every single player? from high school and college all the way in, until the pros. And, and even in the pros, they're probably doing it as well, right? Lots, lots. I mean, the amount of data is actually kind of mind boggling. So for at the major league level, there's data on everything, you know, your traditional box score statistics to how fast the ball is moving, where the pitch is located to, um, actually tracking the player's skeletal joints at every split second. Um, so that's some of the, the newer data um, from some, something that's called Hawkeye um, that some, you know, really serious data nerds who, who are probably even, you know, a level or two above my processing power are, are really breaking into these huge data sets to, to try and understand how, um, how these different things can affect player performance. Now, uh, with someone like you at, at, at the major league level, um, what exactly are, are there other positions where you can grow within the, within the industry? Do you eventually become like the general manager of the team? You could. I, I, think, uh, I think becoming the, the general manager of a team is, is an awesome thing. It's a very hard thing to achieve. It's also something that, you know, I think a lot of people think they want to do, but they may might not actually want to do. You know, there's, I'm sure you know, in the the New York area, that's it's it's a hot seat, right? Being being that person, you have to do a lot of things like dealing with the media, um, and dealing with like a lot of things beyond just the baseball side of it. So for myself, that's never been um, like a, a, you know a, a real goal. But I think that um, there are a lot of areas you can advance. So there there are, have been analytics people who have been on to become general manager so the Astros GM James Quick um, former Astros GM now actually who after winning the World Series uh, was let go but uh, but he started out as an analytics guy um, and, and a handful of others uh, came from that background so there's there's move, room to move up all the way to the top but there's also a handful of other positions um, that you can kind of 
achieve, such as like director of analytics, um, or you know, another route is sort of embedding more into another area. So we have people who kind of technically left the analytics department, but now they work um, in like player evaluation. So they're um, kind of a little bit more in the intersection of the scouting side and, and the analytics side. Now, does everyone have to start out as an intern or do they, do they get actually hired and, and actually get a, a full-time position? Yeah, so not everyone has to start out as an intern. A lot of people do. Um, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of good that comes with baseball and sports in general, but the, the less fun, the less rosy side of it is that a lot of people end up being an intern for not one, but two, three, four, five years. And they're, they don't tend to be particularly uh, high paying jobs and it's long hours. So that's, that's some of the, you know, darker side of the industry is that it's because there's so many people that want to break into it. It's very competitive. A lot of people do end up um, doing those internships to break in. I think more and more because of the amount of technical skills that are required to get into the industry. Uh, I think there's some more, more people are coming in through other routes. So if they work, uh, you know, in like a data science or in a, a, you know, more traditional corporate job for three or four years and they get really good skills and then you can kind of skip past that the internship thing and go, go right into a full-time position. So now uh, back at the high school and college level, um, the type of players that, that, major league uh, baseball teams look for? I mean, do they have to be the best of the best? Are they, uh, are they hitting seven, 800 at the high school level? Uh, what are they actually looking for? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So a lot of, some of them are hitting, hitting, you know, six, seven, 800 at, at the high school level, but that's, you know, at the high school level, we try not to get too bogged down into the, the actual performance. What are you hitting? Because, um, because, you know, someone might be playing in California against a lot of arms who are throwing 90 miles per hour on a weekly basis. Uh, and then, you know, we drafted a, a pitcher out of New Hampshire who I think the majority of his starts were were no hitters, in part because the, the level of competition there was was not particularly high. I, I, obviously, he was good. But but so there's really um, it's quite uh, different levels of competition that these guys face. So what we end up looking for, I guess you could say, especially on the high school side is a little more traits based. So you're trying to, um, get different measurements that tell you this guy has the ability to get his bat to the ball. Um, and this guy has the ability to hit the ball hard. So it's really a mix of, um, some of these analytical things you look at, but then, you know, we lean heavily on our scouts as well to be able to identify, um, some of these things, athleticism and, and even, uh, a big part of it um, that isn't well isn't really well quantified right now, but a big part of what a scout does is help to evaluate the players we call makeup or their personality, their drive, how they're going to be able to adapt and and bounce back when they fail. So uh, we're coming to the end of our show, and uh, usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents and the students that you know want to play baseball at the college level and want to eventually you know, get to the major leagues one day, uh, what advice do you want to give them? Yeah. So to actually play or, or to work in analytics? Both. Both. Okay. Well, to, to play, I, I'm definitely not qualified for that. I, I burn out as a, a freshman in high school. <laughs> so, so I leave that to someone uh, who's, who, had, who had a little more talent than myself, but as far as uh, getting into the analytics side of it, um, I think, uh, the first advice I give anyone is make sure it's really what you want to do. Um, it's super awesome. It has some of the biggest perks. I work at the stadium. I get to do really interesting analysis. There's some really great things about the job. It's also very competitive. Uh, it's long hours. You're probably sacrificing pay relative to other industries. So that's, that's kind of the first disclaimer piece of advice I give to anyone. And then once you've kind of past that threshold of, hey, this is really what, what I want to do, not just something that's, that sounds cool. Um, the biggest advice I give to people um, is just go do some work. So I think a big part in me getting hired by the Pirates was that I had a professor um, who I said, hey, I have this baseball project I want to do. Uh, it actually has nothing to do with your area, but, but you know, can I do that as an independent study? And he said, sure. Um, and that ends up being really good because you can show 
hey, I can program, I can communicate, I understand baseball. So that is the biggest thing I think that that separates candidates is, is the ability to just kind of do some work um, and and have the ability to share that with, with uh, people in the industry. Well, great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. It was, it was fun being here. Okay. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uba. Until next time.